in mutual compassion and authentic love. We gather as the family of God. We offer our gifts, our hope, our lives. To build up this community of faith. We bring our song of gratitude and joy. To bless God with all worship and praise. I wish you good morning and welcome to worship with Oxford Baptist Church. It is good to be with you on this fine Sunday morning as we turn towards the end of the summer and, and, and head into the fall. We look forward to all that the fall has for us, even though it will certainly be a different kind of fall than we've had before. It is exciting to see the changing of seasons with the patterns of our lives, and it's ex exciting to be able to celebrate some of that here in this service today. Thanks to Cam and Chase, two of our new seventh graders who've led us already in the call to worship. And I give thanks for uh, others uh, like Susan Satterwhite, who will be giving the children's sermon in just a minute, who, who have led and who will lead in this service of worship for us today. Thank you for joining us. I pray that this time that you share with us uh, while we're apart will be meaningful to you and helpful for, for you this week as we worship together. Welcome to worship. Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to our children's message this morning. We're going to talk about back to school. So it's time for all of us to go back to school. Some of us have already started, and some of us are going to start soon. And when we start a new school year, sometimes we're nervous and we have worries. And the big word for that is anxiety. And sometimes we're worried about our teacher or if we're going to meet new friends. And this year, our worries are even larger because some of us are having to do remote learning some days or all days and stay at home. 
So our worries, our anxiety is larger than normal. So this morning, we're going to re return and look at two books on where we can learn how to handle our worries so that we can have a wonderful school year. We're going to start with a book called A Little Spot of Anxiety. A story about calming our worries. Hi, I am Peaceful Spot, and this is Gray Spot, an anxiety spot. What is an anxiety spot? He looks worried. Your anxiety spot can show up when you're feeling worried, nervous, anxious, or scared. Anxiety is one of the many emotions we experience every day. Other emotions are sadness and anger too. We all have these emotions inside of us, but we feel the best when we are in our peaceful spot. Your anxiety spot makes you worry a lot, especially when you try new things. Remember when you first tried to play soccer? You might have thought, am I gonna be bad at this? Or when you had to take a test, what if I fail? Every time your anxiety spot asks you, what if? Remember, you can always answer with, I can do this. That will help you change your anxiety spot to a peaceful spot like me. It's okay to have small anxiety spots because sometimes worrying protects you. But when your worries become too big or too many, it doesn't feel very good and it can make you miss out on things that are fun and good for you. Sometimes when your anxiety begins to grow, it can cause a tummy ache or it can make you start to sweat. This is your body telling you, you need to manage your anxiety spot quickly. Did you know there are things you can do to keep your anxiety spot from getting too big? Like making sure you're eating healthy and making sure you're getting plenty of rest. This will give your body enough energy to help you prevent your anxiety spot from showing up. Music, drawing, and writing can help you express your worries through art instead of letting your anxiety spot grow. Sometimes you end up in a situation where your anxiety spot surprises you and it can start growing really fast. But before you panic, I wanna show you how to quickly shrink your anxiety spot. Okay, look at your hand. Can you hold your hand up? Imagine five gray spots are on your fingers and one green spot is in your palm. Everybody point to their palm in the green spot. That's where our green spot's gonna be. And up here will be our anxiety spots, okay? Just like this. So talking about going back to school, our anxiety spot might be, oh, will I find my classroom? Or will I meet new friends? Will I know how to do that assignment? Will I get logged onto that computer? Lots of feelings can pop up that make us worry. Now, with your pointer finger, do I hold up your pointer finger, Mr. Pointer? On your other hand, I want you to draw an imaginary line from one of the gray spots to the green spot on your palm and repeat after me. Are we ready? All right, so you're gonna find one anxiety spot. From the tip of my finger, can y'all say that? From the tip of my finger to the middle of my palm. I can do this. Can y'all say, I can do this? I can, I can do, do this. this. I can be calm. Let's try it again. All right, y'all repeat after me. Go to one of your anxiety spots, one of your worries, and repeat after me. From the tip of my finger, from the tip of my finger, to the middle of my palm, I can do this. I can do this. I can be calm. I can be calm. Imagine the worry on your gray spot, so your anxiety spot, traveling to the green spot, our peaceful spot, and becoming calm. So this is something that we can do when we're at school, when we're worried. We don't even have to say it out loud. Now for the second part. This worry grew too big and cannot stay. Take a deep breath and blow it away. Let's try that. The worry grew too big and cannot stay. Take a deep breath and blow it away. 
Imagine yourself blowing the worry off of your gray spots. Now all you can see is a calm green spot. Taking slow, deep breaths is a great way to calm your anxiety spot. Can y'all breathe with me? Now that is not near you anymore. It can't make you worry. Okay, now that you have learned a way to calm your anxiety spot, let's try it in situations where your anxiety spot surprised you. Because sometimes we don't know that we're going to be worried about something, right? Like your first day of school. Being away from your parents can make you feel scared and anxious. Or meeting new people can make you feel worried that you won't fit in. This is a perfect time to practice our little trick. Are we ready? Here we go. Find an anxiety spot with your pointer finger. You ready? Repeat after me. From the tip of my finger. From the tip of my finger. To the middle of my palm. To the middle of my palm. I can do this. I can do this. I can be calm. I can be calm. This worry grew too big. This worry grew too big. And cannot stay. And cannot stay. Take a deep breath and blow it away. We blew our worries away. I can do this. I'll see you later. Or what about sometimes when you show up to a party? Anxiety spot might have come with you. What if they don't like me? I'm nervous. Sometimes it's hard to be around new people, but worrying only makes your anxiety spot grow. Instead, practice our little trick. Here we go. From the tip of my finger, from the tip of my finger, to the middle of my palm, to the middle of my palm, I can do this, I can do this, I can be calm, I can be calm. This worry grew too big, this worry grew too big, it cannot stay, it cannot stay. Take a deep breath and blow it away. We blew all our worries away. I can do this. This party is fun. The more times that you can shrink your anxiety spot, the stronger your peaceful spot becomes. Celebrate when you are able to shrink down your anxiety spot. Use that confidence to help you in new situations where your anxiety spot shows up. If you need some help, just remember our little trick. One more time, here we go. From the tip of my, my finger, finger, from the tip of my finger, to the middle of my palm, to the middle of my palm, I can do this, I can do this, I can be calm, I can be calm. This worry grew too big, this worry grew, grew too, too big, big, and it cannot and stay, and it can't stay. Take a deep breath, and blow it away. Okay, so that book taught us a cool strategy to take with us everywhere we go. And even when you're at school, in the hallway, you don't have to say it out loud, but you can just do it very quietly and rub to your calm spot and blow it away. Now the next book I want us to look at is the Bible. I look up what the Bible says about a lot of stuff, whether I'm happy or sad or nervous or worried, because I always want to know what Jesus tells us about when we're feeling a certain emotion. And do you know when I looked up worry and anxiety in the Bible, it shows up over and over and over. I could have picked so many verses to share with you boys and girls this morning, but I just show, I just want to share a few with you. The first one is in Deuteronomy 31.6, and this is what it says. Be strong. Be courageous. Okay? Do not be afraid of them, for the Lord your God will be with you. He will neither fail nor forsaken you. The next one that I want to share with you is Jeremiah 29, verses 11 through 12. Let me find it here. This one says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not evil, to give you a future and a hope. In those days when you pray, I will listen. So when I feel nervous about something, I always pray to God and say, God, please help me through this. The next one, I love this one, Matthew 6, 25 through 26. Okay, so let's see here. Here we go. Don't worry about things, food, drink, and clothes, for you already have life and a body, and they are far more important than what to eat and wear. 
Look at the birds. They don't worry about what to eat. They don't need to sow or reap or store up food for your heavenly father feeds them and you are far more valuable to him than they are. And then another one in Matthew is Matthew 6, verse 34. So don't be anxious about tomorrow. God will take care of your tomorrow too. Live one day at a time. And that's something very important right now. When we start a new school year, we start thinking about all we have to do and, and all of the to-do lists that are piling up. And God tells us in the Bible, do not worry about tomorrow. Live today. And the last one I'm going to share with you this morning is Philippians 4, verses 6 through 7. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God your needs and don't forget to thank him for his answers. So boys and girls, we're going to pray, okay? And we're going to talk to God and this is something that I want you to do every day. I want you to talk to God. And when you're worried at school, you can do our little trick where you move your worry spot to your peaceful spot and you blow the worry away. And then you can turn to God in prayer. God's always listening. He wants to hear us. He wants to give us strength to get through our day. And God will give us the peace that we need. Let's bow our heads. Dear God, we're so thankful for the wonderful school year ahead. We thank you for our teachers. We thank you for our school. We thank you for our friends. And we thank you for our parents. And we thank you for our church, Lord. We ask you to be with us in the days ahead. Give us strength to, to learn new things and the you know, power to get through even the hardest times. And when we're feeling sad and worried and confused, Lord, help us to remember to rely on you, to close our eyes or leave our eyes open and pray and ask you for your guidance in all that we do. We're excited about the opportunities ahead. We're thankful and we will always turn for you when we need this strength. Be with us, Lord, and help us have a wonderful, wonderful school year. Keep us safe in your care and guide us each and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good morning. This morning's scripture comes from Psalm chapter 105, verses 1 through 6. Give thanks to the Lord and proclaim his greatness. Let the whole world know what he has done. Sing to him. Yes, sing his praises. Tell everyone about his wonderful deeds. 
Exult in his holy name. Rejoice, you who worship the Lord. Search for the Lord and for his strength. Continually seek him. Remember the wonders he has performed, his miracles and the rulings he has given. You children of his servant Abraham, you descendants of Jacob, his chosen ones. One of the theologians that people who go to seminary spend time talking about is named Karl Barth. One of Karl Barth's uh, phrases was that preachers should preach with the, the newspaper in one hand and the Bible in the other. There are a lot of preachers who do that. There are a lot of preachers who take what is happening in the culture and bring it right into the center of their worship service and talk about it. I have noticed that different preachers in our community, as we've been apart, and I've dropped in on other worship services, preachers of all stripes will say some of that, will bring some of those issues into worship. And, well, that's about as far as I'm going to go with it this morning, because there's plenty outside of the walls of worship that stress us out. There is much that we can be praying for. There are many people in our community, in our country, and in our world who need our prayers and who need action from Christian folks like us. And so during this pastoral prayer time, there is a prayer that's scripted for you in the order of service that you've gotten through the email or on the OBC Devotionals website. And it is a prayer uh, to God, asking for us to have compassion and, and asking for God to have compassion and to be with those who need the Lord most. So when we watch the news, scroll through social media feeds, read the newspaper, what, what we may be doing, what we're also doing, is praying for those who need to be seen by the Lord, who need to feel as though they are seen by the Lord. And we need the Lord to touch our hearts so that we know who needs to be seen today. May this prayer direct us in a way that helps us to see those who God has given to us today and in each day that lies ahead. Will you pray with me? God of compassion, you watch our ways and weave out of terrible happenings wonders of goodness and grace. Surround those who have been shaken by struggle with a sense of your present love. Hold them in faith. Though they may be lost in these days and times, may they find you and be comforted. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was dead, but who now lives and reigns and rules this world with you, now and forevermore. Amen.
for this morning's sermon, you'll see that in the order of service, we've listed that Exodus 3 verses 1 through 15 are our scripture reading. But there is another reading. It's Romans uh, 12 verses 9 through 21. We're going to share in both of those readings now. Join me as we hear God's word. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest at Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called out to him, out from the bush, Moses, Moses, God says, here I am. Then he said, come no closer, remove the sandals from your feet, for this place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their suffering. And I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hevites, and the Jebusites. The cry of Israel has now come to me. I have seen how the Egyptians oppress them, so come. I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses says to God, who, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Jesus, Egypt? He says, I will be with you, and this shall be a sign for you, that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship on this very mountain. But Moses says to God, if I come to the Israelites to say to them, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, well, what is his name? What shall I say to them? God says to Moses, I am who I am. He says further, thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, thus you shall say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name, and this is my title for all generations. And now we turn to Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 15. Paul writes, Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Out, outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit and serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless them and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. But take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably, peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Now, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. 
If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So this morning's sermon is one that I share with, well, it has two parts. Apart from the beginning of Scripture in Exodus, apart from towards the end of Scripture in Romans. A promise from God and a call to action to us. A sermon in two parts. Now as we begin the first part, I was trying to think this week about, well, about five or six months ago. What it was like back in March when this whole COVID-19 pandemic started. And I was trying to remember, because I thought somewhere in the back of my head that some experts had said, yeah, this is going to be disruptive to our lives for 12 to 18 months. I assumed we would, you know, Stop doing things for four to six weeks. We'd locate where all the cases were. We'd stamp those cases out and then we'd be back to normal. Turns out, I'm not a public health official. I'm not a virologist or an epidemiologist. And that thought that helped me get through March and April and having to preach to a camera on Easter. Well, it helped me through that time, but... Well, that was some 20 weeks ago now. Now we're almost six months into a disrupted life with maybe six, 12 months ahead of us. Now that's no prediction or prognostication about what might happen as it relates to the life of the church or or our worship together or our worship apart. I don't have the answers to that, and that's not the point of the sermon. The point of me telling that story, that there were experts who said this might be 12, 18 months, maybe a little longer, was to help me ask the question and to help you ask the question. If you're six months into a time of trial that's going to last six or 12 more months, What would you like to hear from God? What would you like to hear from God now to help you through the time that is to come until you can return to something that feels more comforting, more normal? more familiar and connects you in in ways to the people that you deeply love but you don't live with every single day. One of the answers to that question is what God says to Moses in Exodus chapter 3. What do you want to hear from God? I think we probably want to hear this. God saying, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I've heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings. I've come here to deliver them and to bring them up to a broad and good land flowing with milk and honey. The cry of the Israelites has come to me. I've seen how they're oppressed. So come, I'm going to send you to my people. The Israelites, and I'm going to bring them out of Jesus, out of Egypt. God has seen his people. God saw the Israelites in Egypt. And God set about to do something about it. Now, Moses is nervous. He was just tending sheep. He was tending his father-in-law's sheep he wandered up to the mountain of god and then there's a bush that's burning that's not consumed and then the bush starts talking to him and he makes him take off his sandals and 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 well none of this is normal for moses but god sees him god promises to be with him god 
says, I'm going to get you to take my people to the promised land. And unfortunately, there is no step-by-step -step instruction by which this is going to happen. The only promise is when they get there, they're going to worship right here on this mountain where you are right now. God acknowledges the people's misery. He understands what they're going through. And they're going to be brought out of their oppression by Moses. That's the rest of the story. And for us these days, maybe it's tempting to wonder, okay, if God did that for the Israelites through Moses, who might God use to deliver us from whatever it is we're struggling with right now? Well, I'm not here to anoint a Moses figure for you. The fact of the matter is we're all too stubborn and independent to agree on one Moses figure. And that's not the point of the sermon. The promise from God is that I have seen you. I love you. I will care for you. I will provide for you. And just as he says in verse 12, I will be with you. Just as Moses was with, just as God was with Moses, as the Israelites began to flee Egypt, so too do we believe that whatever strange land we find ourselves in, and if we want to name that strange land 2020, I think we can. God will walk with us. God sees us and God knows our struggles, our burdens. Our sadness is what we are missing and how we might be grieving. I think we can and we should rest assured in that affirmation and that promise from God. That is the first part of the sermon. God sees you. God knows you and loves you. Now, the second part is that because we are seen and known by God, because God promises to be with us, there is a freedom that we are given, and there is a power to act that we are given. And that power to act comes from Romans chapter 12. Paul writes, let your love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor. Don't lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord, rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep, and he goes on. God sees us. Because God sees us, there is a call to action from Romans. And it's to love. If you know your biblical history, you know that Paul's letter was nowhere near being written when Moses was leading the people out of Egypt. But I guarantee you that if Moses had gotten an advanced copy of Romans, he would have read these passages to the people. Love one another, care for one another, support one another. We're going to be in this for a while, so behave well for one another. See one another's grievings. Understand and support. Let retaliation be God's job. And instead of retaliating, Love. Support and provide for each other. Outdo one another with good deeds. Take this message to heart. As we're grieving the loss of a year, a year that is stressful, a year that is anxiety-inducing, a year that is different than we ever expected it to be. Because all around us, there are issues that can stress us out. 
And then there's COVID-19. Which has created a year that I've not known in my 43 years on earth. And many of you who are twice my age haven't known a year that was quite like this one. Have you? And there's a lot of places you can seek comfort or generate a fire in your belly. But maybe turn off your TVs, close your social media feeds, put away the newspapers, and remember what it is that God calls us to, which is to see each other through love, to see each other with patience, to see each other with kindness and to outdo each other with kindness. To let retaliation and judgment be God's job. And to make love ours. We have the freedom of knowing, the blessing of knowing that God sees our stresses. That God sees how we struggle. That God sees what we need and that God promises to walk with us each step of the way. And with that blessing comes opportunity and responsibility. And the call today is to, with the opportunity that we have, love. Love and support. Love and care. Love and listen. Agree or disagree, but love. This is a sermon with two parts. One where God promises something and one where God calls us to something. One from the front of the Bible and one from the back of the Bible. One to take assurance in and one to act from. I pray today that we will find the strength from the beginning of Scripture in knowing that the Lord sees us and is with us. And I pray that we will take the responsibility and the opportunity to act and live out of love from the end of Scripture. Because in the end, what is there but love? We are all God's children. God sees us all. I pray today that we will take each take two steps. And by taking both steps, I believe with all my heart, God will be with us every step of the way. Amen. Before we bring our service to a close and share in our benediction, I do want to thank you for all the ways that you continue to support the church financially. Many of you have given faithfully as you always have and you always do, and for that we give great thanks. Some of you have started giving in new ways this year because this pandemic has brought up to the forefront for you that which is important. And I'm thankful for all of you. I'm thankful for all of us. And I'm thankful for this church that, that you know, even though we've been away from each other, when we do get together, it's familiar and it's comforting. And through the small meetings that we've had, through the parking lot gatherings that we've had, or even in, unfortunately, having to see some folks at funerals, it has been good to be reunited in brief times and in small ways. To remember that, you know, distance does make the heart grow fonder. And I do look forward to the day that we can celebrate together again in person. I don't know when that will be. But I know that the Lord is walking with us now. And I know the Lord will be, be with us when we're ready to be back here together. On that note, you've heard a lot from me in this little time uh, throughout the last 23 weeks. And uh, this morning, Andy Archer, the chairperson, the chairman of our deacon body, wanted to share a word with you uh, from the deacons, from the logistics team. And uh, there's no new news in this word, but I want you to hear this word, this address, this couple minutes he's taking to share with you from his heart um, as one of our elected church leaders, uh, where we're at and, 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 and what's next. Andy. Back in March, our lives came to a screeching halt 
work, school, sports, and social activities all seemed to stop at one time. And our church was not immune to this. At our normal deacons meeting in March, the deacons unanimously voted and approved to place all services that were in person at the church on hold for a two-week period. Two weeks went by and we gathered again. And from that point on, we took two weeks at a time until we got into May. In May, uh, the deacons appointed the logistics team. The logistics team is made up of 12 deacons along with Chris, Cindy, and Steve representing the staff of Oxford Baptist. The team's main objective was to develop a plan to safely to return to worship and other services, as well as recommend a date for when we would return. We have developed a plan to safely return. This plan includes masks, social distancing, limiting the number of people in the service, as well as controlling the entering and exiting of the sanctuary. We also are still looking at a possible date of return. For the future of Oxford Baptist Church, we feel as a committee that we need to look at everything when it comes to picking the date to return. We look at uh, the CDC guidelines, we look at medical trends, we look at hospitalizations, we look at a lot of different metrics so that we can make the best decision for the future of our church. And while these decisions may not always be liked by all, we feel as a logistics team and committee that we are making the best decisions that we can for the safety of our congregation and our church. As for the future and when we will return to church, we have a logistics team meeting coming up on September 10th. At that time, we will look at the metrics, look at the trends, get medical advice from our team members, what's going on in the community, and we will make a recommendation to the deacons on September 13th during our deacons meeting of when we think we should return to service. But if you're missing something, if you want to get back to some sort of normalcy, there are other things that have gone on at church and are still going on at church to kind of fill that void. The logistics team developed a use form. This use form is basically just a form if a small group would like to come meet at the church. If you're a Sunday school class, or any other small group that wants to meet, stop by the church and pick up a form. The form simply asks for your name, contact information, how many people are in your group, when you want to meet, where do you want to meet. Uh, that sort of information is needed by the church so that we can better plan um, the events and make sure that you are on the church calendar. If you want the Family Life Center for your Sunday school class, stop by and get a form, fill it out. Um, the church, while not meeting in person on Sunday morning, is still active. I can attest to this. We're in a world of uncertainty right now. We have been for a while, and we probably will be for a while longer. But we have a wonderful staff. Chris, Cindy, Steve, Judy, Martha, have all done an impeccable job during these times of uncertainty. They've kept us moving forward with these resources, with the video resource, with the Vespers that, are, that is offered on Tuesday nights in the parking lot. Uh, the other things that are going on, the youth did the passport over the summer. They did a, uh, the virtual vacation Bible school. So there's still there, stuff there to be engaged in. But as we move forward as logistic team, as deacons, as the Oxford Baptist staff, as a congregation, please be rest assured that we are working together so that we can gather sooner than later. I hope that sooner will come soon. I thank you for taking time to look at this. Um, 
if you would like to comment um, with concerns or anything, please reach out to me, reach out to the staff, uh, reach out to a deacon, any deacon, your deacon, um, anybody. And we will try to answer any questions or concerns you may have. But in the meantime, and until we meet again, I pray that you, your family, and everybody you love stay safe in a world of uncertainty. Thank you. I'm thankful for Andy. Uh, I have had, I think, seven amazing deacon chairpersons in my time serving as your pastor. And Andy is uh, a great friend and a great person and a great leader for this church. And I'm thankful for his words and for his support of the staff and his love for this church. He deeply loves this church and loves all of you. It's time now for the benediction. And so, if you will, bow and receive these words as I send you out with them. Go, and as you go, may the Lord Jesus Christ go ahead of you as planner and preparer of your way. Go, and as you go, may the Lord Jesus Christ go behind you as finisher and completer of all that gets left undone. Go, and as you go, may the Lord Jesus Christ be over you, watching over you and yours. Go, and as you go, may the Lord Jesus Christ be under you to pick you up when you should fall. And you and I, we most certainly do fall. But most of all, go, and as you go, may the Lord Jesus Christ be in you, incarnating his love, assuring you that you are seen, and calling you forward to act through love, through the love of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who is with us today, now, and forevermore. Amen. And amen.